Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about pH, pOH, hydronium ion concentrations, that's the H3O+, and hydroxide ion concentrations, that's the OH-. Knowing how to go between these four variables forms the basis for tons of different problems in chemistry associated with acids and bases. They're really important if you're going to calculate the pH of a weak acid or a strong acid, or if you're looking at buffers or titrations. So they're really important to get down as kind of a foundation. Before we take a look at doing some of these calculations, let's look at various solutions that have these different species. So here's a list of different solutions. We have at the top, for example, HCl, an acid. What you'll notice is in that acid, we're told that it actually has some concentration of H3O+, one molar H3O+, in fact, and some concentration of OH-, 10 to the minus 14th. So one thing to know is that every solution, acidic or basic, if it's aqueous, has both H3O plus and OH minus. And as we get more basic, we get more and more hydroxide, as you'd expect, and less and less hydronium ions. So when you go down to NaOH, a strong base, you see that you have about one molar hydroxide and 10 to the minus 14 molar uh, H3O plus. Now, another interesting fact here is if you look at the pH and the pOH, they always add up to 14. So for example here, 14 and zero give us 14 or 1 and 13 give us 14, or for pure water, 7 and 7 give us 14. One question that often comes up here is if you have pure water, right, just water all by itself, that's all H2O. So why do you have any hydronium ions or any hydroxide? And that's a good question. It turns out to have to do with something called the auto-ionization of water. And that's a reaction that water does sometimes, not very often, only a small amount of water at any given time will be undergoing this reaction. But the reaction tells us that H2O liquid is in equilibrium with OH minus aqueous and H3O plus aqueous. What happens is two waters basically split apart, one into a hydroxide and one takes that extra hydrogen ion and becomes H3O+. So that's why even in pure water, there's low concentrations of OH- and H3O+. All right, now how do you go between pH and hydronium ion concentration? Well, you just take the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. Anytime you see that P, it actually means negative log. So pOH then is negative log of my OH- concentration. Okay, now let's work a few problems where we go between these four variables. In this problem, we're asked to find the pH, the pOH, the OH minus, and the H3O plus concentration of a solution containing 1.2 molar of the strong acid HCl. Now, it's really important here that it tells us this is a strong acid. And that means that every single one of my hydrogen ions on the HCl is going to fall off and make H3O plus. And so that means that my HCl concentration of 1.2 molar is actually exactly equal to my H3O plus concentration. That's true for strong acids and bases that you have that equivalence, but that's not true if you have a weak acid or a weak base, which only sometimes splits apart. So HCl always splits apart, so you get the same amount of H3O plus. All right, so that is our first of those four variables. We have gone ahead and found H3O plus. Now let's go ahead and find pH, pOH, and OH minus. Which one should we go to next? Well, if we look to our equations at the right, we just think about which one can we solve. Well, we have H3O plus concentration, but not pH. So that means we can go ahead and solve for our pH. So pH is equal to the negative log of my H3O plus concentration, which is equal to negative log of 1.2 molar. That actually gives me a pH of negative 0.079. Now, a lot of people don't like that they see that negative pH there, but actually pH can be negative and pOH can be greater than 14, and that's no problem. pH does not run 0 to 14. That is a common misconception. It actually can run across a wider range of numbers. Okay, now we have pH and H3O+. Can I use this equation here? Well, that has pOH and OH-. I don't have either of those, so skip that. And then I come down to this next one and I see, oh, you know what, if I have pH, then I can actually go to pOH. So let's go to this next part of the problem where we're gonna solve for pOH. So 14 is equal to pH plus pOH. So if I wanna solve for pOH, 
all I have to do is subtract pH from both sides. And I'm going to get 14 minus pH equals pOH. So that's 14 minus a negative 0 0.079 equals 14.079. That's my pOH. Okay, so now I have pH, pOH, and my hydronium ion concentrations. Last thing I want to go to, and probably the hardest algebra, is to go to my hydroxide concentration. Notice now I have my hydroxide, I'm sorry, I have my OH, my pOH, and so I can go then to my hydroxide. How do I do that algebraically? Well, pOH equals negative log of my OH minus concentration. The key thing here is to remember that 10 raised to both sides gets rid of my log, but I have to get log all by itself first. So I'm gonna take the negative to this side by multiplying by negative one. So when I multiply by negative one, I just flip the negative sign. And now I'm gonna do 10 raised to both sides. When I do that, my 10 raised to the log cancels out. And I just am left with the OH minus. So I get 10 raised to the negative pOH equals my OH minus concentration. A lot of people will just commit that equation that we just wrote there to memory because it seems a little easier. So we do 10 raised to the minus 14.079. And that's going to give us 8.34 times 10 to the minus 15 molar for my OH minus concentration. So that's my final answer there. All right, let's do one more. In this problem, we're asked to find the pH, or I'm sorry, we're told that the pH of 0.25 molar NH3 is 9.05. And then we're asked to find the pOH, the OH minus, and the H3O plus. So since we know pH, we know that we can either go and use this equation to get pOH or this equation to get H3O plus. Let's go ahead and find the pOH first. So pH plus pOH equals 14, just like we saw before. And now we're going to, just like we did before, subtract pH from both sides. We're going to get pOH equals 14 minus pH. So pOH is then going to be equal to 14 minus 9.05. And for our pOH, then, we will get, wait for it, wait for it, 4.95. You think I should be able to just do that in my head? but I have a secret sheet here that gives me all the answers that I wrote. All right, so that's my pOH. Now that I have pOH and pH, I can use either of my other two equations that will solve for the concentration of my hydroxide and hydronium ions. All right, so let's go ahead then and use our pOH expression. Remember, just like last time, pOH equals negative log of my OH minus concentration. I'm gonna move the negative sign over and then do 10 raised to both sides. And like I said, that gets rid of your log and a lot of people just remember this equation. All right, and now 10 raised to my negative 4.95 is going to give me 1.12 times 10 to the minus five molar. So that's my OH concentration. All right, lastly, just like I can rearrange my pH equation or my pOH equation, I can rearrange my pH equation and I'll get 10 raised to the negative pH is equal to H3O plus. Go ahead and try yourself, pause the video if you want, see if you can do the algebra to get there. Looks just like our pOH algebra. 10 raised to negative 9.05 which is my pH, is going to give me my hydro hydroxide. So nope, my hydronium ion concentration. Good. 8.91 times 10 to the minus 10 molar. All right. So that's the concentration of my hydronium ions. So there you have it. Those are those four or those three different pH equations that are, turn out to be really useful to solve for all of the different variables you need when you're dealing with an acid or a base. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.